boy, what a mess. Fred was always so unorganized. I can't believe that after 30 years, he kept a pesticide storage shed that looks this bad. I'm glad he's finally retired. Yeah, I'll tell you, that guy absolutely hated the regulations. And he was always trying to find somebody to do his work for him. But it looks to me like he couldn't find anybody to clean this place up. Well, it's our mess now, so we better get to working to clean it up right. Carrie, do you have those regulations from the Washington Department of Agriculture? Yeah. Well, let's look in there and see what we have to do first. Well, let's see. It says we're not supposed to put anything else in the pesticide area other than pesticides. Look at this bag of feed. Geez, I wonder if it's been contaminated. Man, can you believe this? Fred must have kept all of his junk in here. Look at all of this stuff. Well, first things first. We need to start sorting this stuff out. We'll put pesticides over here, the paint over here, and the <laughs> garden tools Careful. somewhere else, and the rest of the stuff outside. Here smoking his cigarettes, <laughs> feeding his kitty, watching TV. Sure looks It'd like be. it. <laughs> well, this university bulletin that we've been looking at actually tells us exactly what kind of a storage area we should have. But I don't really think there's a lot that we can do about that. I mean, this is the only place that we have to store this stuff. Well, what do the guidelines say this has to be? Well, let's see. OK. It says it should have a cement floor, but cannot have a drain. So we're OK there. Uh, let's see. There should be plenty of ventilation. It should be insulated, and that probably means it shouldn't get too hot or too cold. You know, it shouldn't freeze in here. Um, it should be dry with no leaks from rainfall or seeping of water. And shoot, there should be plenty of light so that you can see what you're doing. It's kind of dark in here. Yeah. Well, I'll go get a higher wattage bulb. Well, it says something about being fireproof, but it seems that if we actually built a shed, that could get pretty expensive. Yeah, but a spill or a fire could be even more expensive. So maybe we'll just work with the shed we have now and consider building a new one in the future if we get more money. Um, those guidelines, you know, they're for perfect people in a perfect world, so we'll just deal with what we have now. Good idea. Let's see. It says to always store pesticides in their original containers. Don't pour off a partial amount into other containers. Well, that sounds logical. You know, I wonder what was actually in that maple syrup container that Jeff found. It says something about putting transparent tape over the label, and I guess that's to sort of protect the label so that it doesn't become unreadable. Let me see. Yeah, and, and label must be readable so that you always know what's in each container. Yeah, look, here's one that's ripped. Yeah. Could fix that up. You know, I can make out most of the labels on these containers, and some, like this one, even have these plastic sleeves. But other ones, look at this one. I mean, it's right next to this gopher bait, and the prob mouse probably chewed this one all up. Yeah, we can sure be more careful about labels from now on. What else does that? She'd say. Uh, OK. Let's see. It says, be sure all open containers are kept securely closed, sealed. This will help prevent 
accidental spills and keep fumes from escaping. Yeah, fumes would be really bad if somebody had to work in here. Yeah. So let's check all these and make sure they're sealed tight. It also mentions that open bags of wettable and soluble pesticides should be closed up in sealable plastic bags. Well, that's a good idea. That'll help keep them from getting wet. You know, moisture won't get in then. And, and um, probably help keep them from getting tears, too, so that pesticide's not spilling out onto the floor. Well, this is an open bag here, so I better go get a large plastic bag to put it in. OK. Hey, I have a really great idea. When Fred left, he's got this great big cabinet in his office, and I don't want it in there anymore, so I was going to give it to either you or Jeff. And we could just bring it in here now and store the pesticides inside of that cabinet. Is that that metal cabinet? Yeah, it's a, a metal cabinet with a lock on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it said in those guidelines that we've been looking at that you need to actually put any pesticide that's labeled danger or danger poison in a locked cabinet. So that'd be perfect. Yeah, that'd be great. And that gopher bait, I know, says danger poison. Is there anything in the guidelines that says how we should put these containers in that cabinet? Yeah, I thought I saw that. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Store pesticides in glass bottles on lower shelves so that sunlight cannot heat them, especially if your storage area is not insulated against heat. Heat could cause containers to break or explode. Yeah, we wouldn't want that happening. Well, glass containers on the bottom shelf also means it's harder for them to fall off and break. Sounds logical. OK, it suggests that you store herbicides separately from insecticides and fungicides so that you don't accidentally use a wrong chemical or cross-contaminate product. Well, let's get to work. Let's see, we've got our wettable powders and dusts on the top shelf and our liquids on this next shelf and our glass bottles on the bottom shelf, so that, that's good. It also mentions in here that we should keep an inventory of all the pesticides we have and um, with the purchase date, too. So that, that way we can use up everything, um, the older stuff first, and you know we'll know um, what's in here in case there's some sort of emergency. Well, who knows when half this stuff was purchased. We'll have to use the old stuff up, though, as soon as we can. We can do the inventory, though. Okay. Okay, let's see. The regulations say that if a pesticide label says danger or danger poison, it is considered a Category 1 pesticide. You must put up a warning sign that says danger, poison, storage area, keep out, with letters large enough to be read from about 30 feet away. OK, now that we're going to need to put a sign on the outside of the building, too, since we have this storage cabinet in the building. Well, I'll go make those signs for the building door and for the cabinet door. OK, okay that sounds good. All right. Hey, it looks like we're about done. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. I think this place is about where it should be. It's up to snuff. Hey, I've got an idea. <laughs> now that he's gone, you know, this place needs to be checked regularly for spills, the inventory kept current. Let's make him responsible. What do you think? Sounds like a plan. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, is that that metal cabinet that he had in there? Yeah, that's that metal cabinet. 
That's a great idea. <laughs> that would have been great if I didn't start laughing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, his face just kills me. <laughs> she just like, hey, idiot. 